Let's talk about the Euler's method, which is the numerical method. Okay, so you I have showed you several examples at the beginning. Whenever we have a differential equation, we solve it using a computer. This is, will be the simplest algorithm you can use to actually solve the computer, and you can solve it the ODE on computer, and uh, you can try it by yourself. You can try to code it up. It's very easy. Okay, the idea is quite simple. Let's say you are given a you were given an initial value problem. So y prime equals f t y. So it's a first order initial value problem. And you know the initial value. Okay. Second, you know you want to solve this initial value problem on a fixed interval. So an interval. I mean, you can, so, of course, given enough time, you can always solve this one all the way up to infinity, which is what happens at the end of the universe. But usually, I mean, a computer cannot do infinite things, so you have to pick an ending point, even though that means maybe the ending point is very big. Maybe it's a million years from now, but you have to pick an ending point. So we can only handle something that is finite. All right. Then you wonder what's the function value at the end time t and all the value from zero all the way up to t. So basically what the solution looks like. So now our idea is quite simple. We know what slope field is. So if this is t, this is y. And you know y0, that means at t equals 0. And at um, t equals 0, and uh, you know your y is y0. And because you, know because you know the point, you can actually always draw the slope field here to tell you which direction this one is going next. So now what you can do is you can divide the whole interval into multiple sub-intervals. Let's say your t is here. Okay. You wonder what happens in between. That means you want to know the function value at every single grid okay, or node happened between 0 and t. So you can actually start from this point and track through this direction until that thing hit the next spot. And then starting from here, according to what you just had from the slope field, you can calculate the slope again. Follow that slope until you find the next point. And then you follow the slope, find the next point, and you just keep going. Finally, when you finish, you simply just connect all these dots together using straight lines. Okay. That's the idea of Euler's method. Okay, from here you can see it's not accurate, of course, because what you did is you were assuming going from here to here, your function follows exactly the slope at this point. But in real case, this one can be curvy. So on every single sub-interval, your solution may not be correct. Okay. The good news is if you want it to be correct, you just have to make the curve locally to be look more and more like a straight line. And to do that, you can simply take a lot of intervals. For example, you can take 100 intervals then once you make the grid super, super dense, and you connect a lot of piecewise uh, straight line together, the thing looks more and more like the original curve. Therefore, you can achieve pretty good approximations. Okay, So that's the idea we have for Euler's method. And this one can be easily done by using a computer. Okay, The only calculation you need is try to calculate the, the slope, slope field. All right. That's the idea, and let's summarize our ideas using rigorous mathematical setup. Okay, so this is the idea. Now, this is the one we are trying to solve. Okay, and y0 equals y0. Okay, interval is given by 0t. So the first step we want to do is we want to define those kind of grids. We want to define a lot of grids. The more, the better. Okay, But in general, let's just say divide 0t into n intervals. It doesn't have to. You can have something which is like this, and then wider, and then denser. But for simplicity, for our argument, we can just make it uniform which means every interval actually have the same length. Therefore, we have the same length, which is h equals the total length 
divided by n parts. For each one, you only have t over n equal time steps. But in real life, of course, you can change the time steps to be different from uh, grid to grid. For simplicity, we keep it this way. Then you start from t0, which equals 0. Your t1 is going to be t0 plus h. T2 is going to be T0 plus 2H. And keep going. So you just go from T0, T1, T2. Just keep moving H forwardly. Then you have a lot of grids. You actually have N grids. Each one has equal length horizontally. And eventually, the last one is going to be Tn, which is your final T. Okay. Now we denote y k. Okay, denote yk to be the approximation of the function y, the real function, at time tk. So yk is going to be the one we are going to compute. We are going to use it to approximate the real one. We don't know the real one. Our hope is this yk is close to the real one. Okay, that will be called a good approximation. Okay. Now, here's the case. How do we calculate that? Now let's draw two grids. Okay. What you do is, number one, you assume you already know yk. You're wondering where yk plus one is. Then, how do you do that? You start from yk. You follow this line. And how do you know this uh, vector? This vector is actually done by using the derivative at yk. Okay, so this red one is going to be the derivative at tk. You are going to follow this, but you don't have this. Instead, you do know y prime equals f t y. Therefore, your y prime tk is going to be approximated by f tk yk. The reason I didn't use uh, equal is because this yk here is technically not your y. Okay, it's your approximation of your y. So even though I can put the y here, but it's not the real y, therefore my derivative cannot be the real derivative. Okay, but either way, this is my derivative. Then what you need to do is, think about it. You know this is h. Okay, what is this? This is yk plus one minus yk. Okay, divided by h is going to give you the slope of this vector, and the slope of the vector is going to, to be given by the derivative, which is approximated by this. Okay, then what you end up with is times h moved to the other side behind this, which means you can get yk plus 1 from yk and tk, assuming you already know tk, f, and yk. Okay, this is called Euler's method. Okay, and if you take a closer look, where did we get it? We simply just start from this point and then follow the slope field uh, for a fixed horizontal length. We got the next point and just repeating this. Okay. But if you really see what we got here, that's where we got the former, right, from this triangle you realize this is nothing but the derivative, right? yk plus 1 minus yk divided by h. This is exactly the difference quotient. Limit h goes to 0. This is going to be the real derivative. So of course, you're not going to get the exact answer because your h is technically not taking the limit. Okay, So this is going to be closer and closer to the real derivative if you let h to be smaller and smaller, which means you have the, you have the grid to be denser and denser. So this actually comes from the definition of difference quotient or from this graph, whichever way you prefer. Okay. So how do we do this? It's simply tell, tell you this. If you know t0, if you know y0, you can get y1. Okay. But then, because you already know t1, if you know t1 and you want know y1 by this former, you can get y2. And because you already know every single tk, that's from the partition,
the every time you calculate a new y, you can use the new value to calcul calculate the next yk. And you can just keep repeating this until, until you have yn by this scheme. So that's what we get. All right, it's doable. Let's try an example. Let's try y prime equals, let me see, which one do I want to use? I want to use y prime equals hey, point y, and your y zero is one, okay. So this is what I want to use. I want to use y prime equals point one y, and I want to use y zero equals one. We know this is going to be the exponential, okay? But let's assume we don't know it, and we want to solve it using a numerical method, okay? So what we can do is, we can try to do it on the interval zero to twenty. Okay, so um, zero to twenty. Now, try to use the Euler's method to approximate it. So first, let's try 10 points, 10 intervals, sorry. This tells you, okay, 20. You want to divide it into 10 equal intervals. Your h is going to be 20 over 10, which is 2 each. That means you start from 0, you do 2, 4, 6, 8, keep going until 18 and 20. You just want to find all these points, which is 11 points. Now, y0 is already given. That is going to be 1. So y k plus 1 equals yk plus h f tk yk, which is yk plus h times point 0.1 y. That is your f coming from the differential equation. Your h is going to be 2. So the whole thing is going to be yk plus 0.2 yk, which is 1.2 yk. That means y1 equals 1.2 times y0. y0 is 1 from, from the initial condition, so this is 1.2. y2 equals 1.2 times times y1. But y1 is 1.2, you just calculate it. So it's 1.2 times 1.2, which is 1.44. y3, okay, which is at 4, by the way. Okay, be careful. And it's 1.2 times 1.44 equals whatever. You just keep going, keep going, keep going until you repeat this thing for 10 times. You got everything from y1 all the way up to y10. Okay, which is what happens at 20. That's it. That's how we do Euler's method using 10 points. And you can expect this is not going to be great, but that's what we're, where we'll start. So, mm, not this one, sorry, this one. Okay, um, give me a second, let me make it bigger. Wow. Okay. This is terribly slow. I don't know why, but maybe it's just because of the recording. All right, let's make it bigger. Okay, from here you can see uh, what I put here on the green line is gonna be the real solution. 
And what I put here on the blue line is going to be the one I used 10 points. The orange points are the points I used. From here, you can see, well, it's bad. It's not accurate. Meanwhile, it's not too bad either. Okay. So how do you make it better? Then we go back to what we had before. We can actually use 30 points instead of 10 points. Okay, so I did the same thing, and this time I used 30 points, and I put all the blue points here. You can see by the connected by the red dash line, it's way closer to the real one. Can you do better? Well, of course, you can take 50 points. Or let's do the extreme. Let's take a 300 points. You can do this by hand. It's pretty tedious. But by computer, you can see this is nothing but a simple for loop. So you can repeat the thing, and now you can see the blue dots overlap with the real solution, at least as far as, our, as we can tell by our eyes. So this is actually what Euler's method gives you. It's pretty, it's pretty good approximation. And with 300 points, we solve this problem with a satisfactory accuracy. Sounds good? All right, so this is some scheme you can try. Every time you have a new VDFQ, you can simply just use the same thing and figure out how to get from Y1 to Y2, Y2 to 3, Y3 to Y4, all the way to the points you want. Okay, and the general principle is the more points you take, the more part smaller the partition you take, the closer this one to the real solution. So that's what we will get from Euler's method. Okay, I will give you another example. I will do for two steps to just give you uh, some practice ideas. This is another one we are trying to solve, and your y is going to be 2 when you start. We wonder what happens on 0, 10. Okay, this time maybe we want to be more accurate, so let's use 100 intervals. That will give you the whole interval is 10 divided by 100. Your h is going to be 0.1 each. So you start from 0, then you 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, all the way to 9.9, uh, .9, and finally 10. It's a lot of points. Okay. Now, what is y1? y1 is what happens at 0.1. That is going to be y0 plus h. Let me write it down. Yk plus 1 is going to be Yk plus h times okay, uh, y minus 1 minus y. That is my f. Finally, it depends on the previous number, k. So if you cling a little bit, it's going to be Yk plus 0.1. Yk, 1 minus Yk. Therefore, y1 is y0 which is 2, you start from 2, is going to be 2 plus 0.2 times negative 1, which is 1.8. That's my approximation for what happens at point 1. Y2, this time use the previous one, which is 1 1.8. So 1 1.8 plus point 0.1 times 1 1.8 times 1 minus 1.8. One point, point, and let's see, point one eight minus. Okay. Now you can see, knowing one two, you repeat the same thing. You got one three. You just repeat the same thing again by a for loop. You can get everything you want, all the way up to one hundred. Plot all of them on the graph with all the points you just find. You will be able to plot the final curve roughly in that way. Okay, you can see the more the smaller the grid you take, the more your piecewise uh, linear function looks like a curvy function. The better the approximation. All right. That's everything we need to know about Euler's method uh, from the method side or scheme side. It's a very, very good approximation. Then the question becomes, what are you waiting for? Like use that thing to solve any dif differential equation you can solve. It will always be able to solve it. Of course, it's not the case. That will be too easy. So let's talk about arrows. Okay. Several things. The first one, you are going to have error. 
where does the error come from for what we just did? Two ways to explain it. First one, what you did is go from here, do a straight line to get the next. But the real situation is it's not a straight line. It may be a curve. Okay, so the er error comes from the linear approximation. So of course, you want your approximation to be as local as possible. You want your h to be as small as possible so you can move on to the next derivative, which is way better than taking a derivative for a long a time. It may change. Another way to think about this is, you know, this is basically my approximation. Why do the Euler's method to approximate the derivative at dk? And this is not accurate unless your h goes to zero. So for no matter how small the h is, your derivative is not going to be accurate. You are just compromising. So this is going to be a approximation error. Okay, approximation error of the first derivative, or or we can just say of y prime. That's where the error comes from. All right. Second, from that we know the smaller the h, the better the approximation, or the, let's say the smaller the arrow. In general, this makes sense. That means the more effort you put into it, the better the results you get. Smaller h simply be, means for the fixed interval, you need more points. More points means more computation. All right. Number three. When you solve a differential equation, you need to think about something called the accumulation error. Not corresponding to the graph we just saw. The real solution looks like this. Your approximation looks like this. And the thing you see is, number one, my approximation is off. But number two, it become more and more off as time goes by. It's not too much off at the beginning. It's way off at here. And if you keep going for a longer time, it's going to be amplified as you go. This is called accumulation error. The idea is quite easy. Y1 has an error. Y2 itself has an error. Plus, it also used the wrong information from Y1. So that's double error. Y3 has an error, number one. The approximation itself has error. Number two, I use the information from y2. Therefore, I carry the error from y2. But y2 carries the error, error from y1. So anything about yk carries all the errors from y1 all the way to yk minus 1. That means the next arrow is going to be on top of all the arrows before summed together. Therefore, it's called accumulation accumulation of arrow. That means at the first, so that means basically what? If you want to approximate something, you better choose a very small interval, if you could, compared to choosing a big interval. If you can predict tomorrow, don't predict next year. Even though you take the same time period, the more time you go, the bigger the arrow because it accumulates. Okay? Which kind of makes sense to us. Like, which one is easier to predict, tomorrow or next year? Probably tomorrow. Why? Because we don't have much arrow to accumulate. But for next year, every single day we'll have accumulated arrow, accumulated all the way up to another 365 days. That's going to be a lot of arrows on top of the arrows. Okay? So if you could do short term prediction, don't do long term. Okay? The long term is not as reliable as the short term one. All right. Number four, numerical methods. Euler method, actually, what we had is first order forward Euler's method, is one simple way to do. It's not the only way to do it. We have other ways. Then, if you have numerical method one and you have numerical method two, how do you know which one is better? In which kind of way? So what I, I cannot go into the details, but I can show you some limitations about Euler's method. Okay. The first one, when you see two numerical methods, you should think about, number one, which one 
has a better accuracy. So you use 10 points, I use 10 points. My arrow is just half the size of what you have. Then the one with better accuracy win. All right. The second one is going to be which one is easier to implement. Maybe you have something which can half my arrow. But to do that, it's very easy for me. It's very difficult for me to code it. It's very easy for me. It's very hard, difficult for me to check if I code it wrong. So easy to implement is another thing. Orders method, even though it's not the best, but usually that's the first thing people try because why? Because it's very hard to make a mistake with the orders method because it's so easy to code. Okay, so easy to implement is another feature. Some method may be great, but it may be complicated in terms of programming. The third one is going to be efficiency. Okay, well, your method is great because it had a better, has a better accuracy. And within 10 steps, you certainly got better accuracy than what I do. But every single step of you will take 10 computers to run and every single one for me will only take one computer to run. I use fewer CPU. That's one type of uh, efficiency, which means space efficiency. A second thing is you calculate 10 steps and I calculate 10 steps, even though you have a better accuracy, but it takes you longer to run because every single step takes you longer to run. So it's almost like a trade-off to get a better accuracy. Maybe you need longer time to run in order to get a better accuracy. So time is another thing you need to think about efficiency. Maybe you have a perfect method which would give you amazing accuracy, but it will take you a million years to run, then it's not applicable. So in real life, you need to think about all of these and many, many more. And there is a whole field called the numerical analysis, which you basically learn how to assess a given numerical method or even how to design a given method, how to modify a given method, numerical method. The one big thing you need to think about is something called stability. They're not technically the same thing with, as convergence, but I put them together just for a rough introduction. That is, sometimes your method fail. It simply just does not converge, or maybe the, it does not converge to the real solution. And sometimes it's really difficult for you to tell. Okay, for example, I will give you an example. This is what we have. Y prime equals e to the t sine t. It's very nice. This one is very smooth. All right. Let's approximate it using 10 points. All this method. I will share with you the code. You can try by yourself. It looks amazing, right? Nothing wrong. What do you think will happen if I change it to be 20 points? Probably you suspect it's gonna be more or less the same, except maybe a little bit more accurate to the real one. Maybe this one is not accurate enough. All right, 20. Looks great. Does it? Pay attention to the one on the left. Okay. Before, when you do 10 points, what happened? You were trying to say like, okay, at one, the value is between one and 3.5 on the left. That means the biggest you can go, your prediction for one is 3.5. But if you change it to 20 points, it becomes six point something, almost seven. Well, maybe you think that's no big deal because now you're getting closer to the real one. What about 30? 25 went from 6 to 25 if you take 10 more points and you can see this one looks more dramatic now what if you take a 300 what's going to happen well my prediction is going to be you're going to have a very very smooth curve right because the more points you take it become more and more like a straight line locally the whole thing looks super smooth okay and you will finally have the right answer and can you predict where the one value will be after seeing this, maybe 30, maybe 40, but more or less because it's already a lot of points, right? It cannot change much, but really, if you do it. This is one, so this is 10 to the 293 times another eight. This one fails miserably, okay? But if, but if you trusted every single numerical method you write down, no matter for what kind of differential equation, you will trust what you see here with 30 points, or maybe with, with 10 points. Mm 
Okay, because it looks so nice. Some people may even stop here and say, "Well, I don't have to do more, but I roughly know. I mean, at one, it's going to be finite, and it's going to be roughly you know below ten. I don't even have to do a thousand points. It will be more or less the same shape, but sadly, it's not. Okay, so how do you know that this kind of thing will happen? Now you can see, it's not as simple a mindset as if I have enough resource. I don't even need to worry about anything. I just take one million points and try it either way. If it's good for one million points, it makes sense. Then I don't have to try more, right? But the result is no. Actually, you don't know if you did the right thing or wrong thing, unless unless you follow a very rigorous mathematical analysis to show your method actually converged to the real solution. Okay, that's not our focus here. We have a whole class here in UWL. The, the introduction to numerical method to tell, talk about these kind of issues. But my point here is just like there, are, the numerical methods are way deeper than what you thought it is. It's not just a simple code up method. Anything can fail. So you really need to know what you're dealing with, what you're using. Is it applicable? All right. That's roughly the introduction to numerical method, particularly Euler's method.